okay, I feel a little bit of pressure, y'all. While I was showing off Suno and Club Strat, basically word came down that Claude 3. Point, is it just for Sonnet dropped? So there's no 3.5 for Opus or all 3.5s dropped? It's just 3.5 for Sonnet. Here, I'm going, here, you know what? I'm going to, I'm going to go screen. to the announcement. I was going to open up the Discord. I got here. I got it right here on my screen. So here's the current, this is what they're doing, right? So we've got Claude 3.5 Sonnet. It's faster than Opus, faster than GPT-4.0. It's got more knowledge. It does better code. It does multilingual math. Um, I think the thing that I was most interested in was the fact that the the level of knowledge is increased. So and it's faster. And the reasoning over tech. That's mm -hmm. also really important for uh writing fiction. Yeah. So there you go. Is now, it cheaper? Did they change the pricing? I think it said it was gonna be cheaper. So it's not out yet. No, I thought it is in the chat. I want to I have the paid chat and it's there. Mm -hmm. All it's right. Been, it's actually listed before they had Opus listed as the most intelligent model. Now they have Sonnet 3.5 listed as the most intelligent model. But been inspired. I'm going to log into the console. Yeah, yeah. That's, I'm already there. I already beat you. Ha ha. I'm going to log in and be where it is. Work fence. Totally going on YouTube, by the way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, the workbench. So I go to the workbench and then I see if I've got, uh, apparently I was doing that. I don't know why. Um, oh my gosh. They always keep changing things. Yeah. Where do you, ch where do you change the model? Model settings. Thank you. I think that's my boo right there. Cause it's 2024-0620. Yeah. It says Claude 3-5 sign in. Yep. Okay. So also I will put a note to Joseph. Yeah. Got to add that to a vaccine. Today. And I will also text him. You are awesome and amazing. And we are lucky to have you as a developer. Exclamation point. Also, 3.5 Sonnet just dropped. BTW. And we all have it in our workbench. Any chance of it adding to Rexy? Question, question. And then a dinosaur. Can't send a heart because he's married. And I don't want it to be misconstrued because it was only about the AM. Oh, okay. I just logged into the chat for my free account. I have two Claude accounts, one paid, one free. Um, the free one, it you can use 3.5 Sonnet for free, it looks like. That's what Maybe. Leonard's saying in the chat. Oh, so, okay. I didn't mean, yeah. You just popped uh, in as, as you were saying it. Yeah. We have about an hour before this. the world makes this crash. So let's go. That's how this works. Uh, go catch it. Do we want to use the science fiction romance? Because I already have that like in Notion and I can just throw that in there with the prompts and like let it go. It'll be a copy paste. So this will basically show how you do the book machine with copy and paste. But sure. Are you okay yeah. to going up on YouTube? I think so. Because it's just going to be the first couple of chapters. And they won't even be the actual chapters. Well, I don't know. We'll see how well, Sonnet, if Sonnet can beat Google 1.5 Crow. Shall we? Put them up. Put them up. <laughs> put them up. Put them up. Okay. I'm going to work in Workbench, though, just because that way I have actual uh, control over the temperature and things like that. Interesting though, the default is the temperature's at zero. Maybe they finally got the message that Claude is uh, too, uh, Claude is, is, is a little too extra. Because I have the system prompt right here. You are a bookmarking machine. Now this one is a little bit different because it does have um, uh, character profiles for the characters that Google was so kind enough to make. And also because I'm working in Workbench, I have, oh gosh, tokens to sample way more. Thank you very much. So I can put my system prompt in here. Goodness. And then the user prompt is going to be the S1s. So I just come over here. Oh, 
the story so far. Oh, I don't have a hmm. not gonna do a story so far. We'll just work with the first scene. That's what we'll do. So the auto write and then the S1s are actually on the notes section for June, the class book machine version two. And then the S1s are down here at the bottom. So go ahead and start writing. And this is the one that we continue with. So we're in Workbench. And I put that prompt in. And I'll close the model parameters. Welcome to Workbench. And I'm going to go ahead and click Run. Certainly, it's going to start by writing the first scene. Oh. So I completely came up with something different. Look, I don't know what kind of joke this is, but I'm an astrogeologist with the astral line. I don't have time for dating, let alone with a member of the Cosmic Confederation. Well, this is certainly going to make things interesting. He turned to the holographic receptionist. We'd like to speak with a representative. I'm not something here magically. I would have, I would add in a gag, the hologram misunderstands and was like, you'd like to know the nutritional content of the dating? No, representative. And for the last update of our terms and conditions, all matches are binding unless both parties agree to pay the cancellation fee of 100,000 star credits. What? That's outrageous. I never agreed to any terms and conditions. Actually, by accepting your position with the Astral Alliance, you agree to participate in the Galactic Population Sustainability Initiative, which includes mandatory enrollment in GDS. Let me guess. The Cosmic Confederation has a similar clause. The hologram nodded enthusiastically. So I actually like this a little bit better, and I might move this in and, and, and add it to it. So let's see how many words it wrote. Oh, first, big, big, important thing. Add it to the conversation, because if you don't, it's gone. It's not, it doesn't save. It's very bad on that. Oh, boy, this is like scroll. Where did it go? Why did it's it not add it? It's down there. There it is. Oh, I see it. Oh, Lord have mercy. I don't like, this is why I like Rexy. So it didn't write me very much. It looked like it wrote, because I have my word counter plus, 456 words. But I like it, and I would add this to the stuff that I currently have. So it's actually really good writing. I liked it. Um, so now I'm going to do the second prompt, which is this read what you have so far, answer the question, or keep going, yada, yada, yada. This is where the AI has the choices to make all the choices that it wants to do. Oh, this is why you asked if I was okay at this being on YouTube. Got it. Yeah, that's okay. I believe it's a good start. I'll rewrite the scene. So see, it's already picking up that it needs to do better. Oh, I'd like to speak to someone, all right. Reaching for a rock hammer. I believe I might be the random alien diplomat in question. Actually, a cup of Zephyrian tea. I hear it's excellent for calming frayed nerves and soothing interspecies tension. Fine. This doesn't mean I'm happy about it. And for the record, I think your whole astrological matching system is complete nonsense. All right. So I did expanding and add it to the conversation. Scroll. And then you just like paste in and keep going. That's, this is why we have Rexy. You just click the button and it just does the thing. So he read through it. Now he's making a plan for scene two. This is where it's supposed to have the funny spaceship. So you can go through and you can make changes to this. So uh, once you add it to the conversation, you can make changes over here. Scroll down. This isn't tedious at all. You could make changes here. Like, see, I can ask my dates. I'll put in the same prompt. It's definitely fast. Like, it's haiku fast. Yeah, this is pretty speedy. It is very speedy. And as long as Claude doesn't get into that loop that it does where it's just like, hey, I wrote this great scene. Yeah, that's really great. Hey, I'm really great. Over and over and over again, where it just phrases itself. And maybe this is working better. After it's revised the previous scene and made it longer, this scene now looks longer to me. Yeah, it's, it's definitely getting longer. And it probably would perform better if I gave it like that first scene so that it understood the snark. To come through. Here's to the strangest research project of my career. All right, let's see what we got for plot for scene two. It's still probably about 600 words, 700. Oh, 948. I was mistaken. So add it to the conversation. 
and you just keep going. The downside is that you can't, oh, it looks like this is new. So I'm gonna rename this as Sonnet 3.5 Testing with um, whatever this is called, Cosmic Audibility. That's the uh, working title, it's not gonna be fun. So it's saved, why is this unsafe changes? Click run or switch to evaluate. Wait, what's this evaluate? It says beta. Okay, I'm gonna run a prompt, run it. Okay, I've got, it should be saved, it's okay. So it's gonna run this. Be yeah, fine. so it says it's, it's fine now. So it doesn't say unsaved anymore. Yeah. Weird. Oh, they now are saving it. Now there's a version history. That's what the V5 means. It's going up on the version so that when I click here for the version history, it has version one, two, three. Okay, so they, they heard us when we said, this is really dumb that you can't save anything. And you have to copy and paste. Um, I wish you could export. They still don't have that capability. You still have to like copy and paste which is kind of sucks. Run a prompt with at least one variable. What, what do you mean by this? I am interesting. Set variable values. Wait, what? Inline like this variable this is, name. This is like, this is like Rexy, where you can yeah. set variables in the... I wonder if there's gotta be some documentation for it. Let me go find it. Okay, I'm here. We are getting to the bottom of this variable business. If it's true, and it's similar to how Rexy works, I am really proud of the fact that we really do influence what changes the AI world. So we've been doing that for like 10 months now. With the same like curly braces, although they're using double curly braces. Using the evaluation tool. Okay. Now has an evaluation tool to test your prompts under various scenarios. Look for the evaluate tab. Okay. Red. So test case one, color, red, sound, bird, model response. Here's a cute one sentence incorporating red and a bird sound. A vibrant red cardinal chirp, a sweet lullaby, a soothing sound drifting through the rosy twilight. I do not understand. I don't get it. I don't get it. Like, what the heck? Okay, let's try this again. Ensure your prompt includes at least one to two dynamic variables using the double brace syntax variable. This is required for creating eval set. Okay. Okay, so what's an eval set? That we're getting there. Yeah. When you press the evaluation screen, you'll see a single row. Okay. In this test, you will generate a cute one sentence story that incorporates two elements, a color and a sound. So for us, I think it would be like, you will create a hook and pitch that incorporates two tropes. Trope one, trope two. But this seems like a lot of extra work versus just saying, I would just say red and bird, right? And unless you can throw a CSB at it or something oh, like that. that. That would be, that would be awesome. Yeah. Okay, so here's no nope. add more test cases. Now let in the values for each variable in your prompt. Repeat to create multiple scenarios. So here's an example. Green dog, blue pony. Wow. Oh, see? Yeah. Interesting. I think you are manually changing the color in there and the sound. No, I think you're doing color and sound, and then you set up test cases where you add in those variables. Okay, well then let's give it a shot. Let's see if that works. We're coming over here. Aren't you guys glad this just turned into a, I'm, I'm gonna go to a new thing. Yeah. It's okay, cause I saved it. So there's my prompts and there's the Sonnet 3.5. Okay. So let's do its first, like what the, exactly what it says. Oh dear. Okay. Which is in this task, you will generate, why couldn't you have made the code copyable do you not have that because that would be easier let's see no they do not have the why make it easy on us why, why make it easy? easy no nope nope 
that's not a thing. Okay. Can somebody read it out loud while I type it in? Sure. Okay. Oh, wait, now there's a new, like, generator prompt. There's all kinds of cool goodies in this. In this tab, you will generate a one sentence. What does it say? Oh, I'm sorry. I don't have that tab open. Oh. In my... Hold on. Give me, give me the tab. Promise we did not plan this comedy, guys. I know. Okay. All right, here we go. Um, In this test, comma, where did it, it like disappear? All right, Generate a cute one story, one sentence story, excuse me, that, that incorporates two elements, colon, a color, and a sound, period. Is it? Great. Next okay. paragraph. Next paragraph. The color to include in this story is colon, uh, and then it's color in angle brackets. Yep. And then double squiggly brackets color. Mm hmm. Um, I think you don't want to do the red. You just want to do color. Oh, and they made it all cap. Yeah, all caps color. And don't want to do the colon. Close that no, because, you know, that's what it's going to put in your oh. variable there. Oh, when I did that, it changed. Yeah. Everyone look at that. Changed. Yeah, now do your closing angle brackets on the next line. And then the next paragraph is, oh, this film to include is in the story. Hold on, hold is on. You're a little too fast. Wait, 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 wait. There you go. I'm stuck. Okay. The sound to include in the story is. And then you're going to do the same thing with sound and then sound. Go. And close it. Export. All right. And then next paragraph. Here are the steps to generate the story colon. Okay. I think we can skip that part, right? Well, no, that's just part of, this is how we evaluate the output. Yeah, but we don't have the rest of the, out, that, that, that prompt. See how it cuts it off? No, it's good. It's right. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I see. Got so it. I'm just going to, I'm just going to see what the heck it does. Mm -hmm. I see that it created other values here. So now you can. Yeah. Okay. You're just... There we go. So once we do that, then I have to upload values here. Um, what is not red? Like an animal. Okay. We're going to go dolphin. Oh, this is a sound. My bad. Um, sound. Uh, opposite of red. Uh, a um, whisper. Uh, uh, yeah. Opposite of orange. Um, a caw. The A W. Off. And purple. Um, mm -hmm. what what sound is this? Motor. Um, vibrating. <laughs> there we go. Right. Let's see what the heck this does. All right. Run. As the sun set in a brilliant display of red, orange, and purple hues, a gentle whisper carried on the breeze, telling secrets of the day's adventures to the listening trees. I okay. don't. So, I think okay. that you were have... supposed to do one, one at a time. So now I'll add a test case. And I'll do red. And whisper. Oh, we can use this to make names. I want purple vibrating lips. Green. There you go. Oh, you want a screen? We'll make blues. Turquoise. I hope I spelled that right. So we click run. The little red ladybug whispered a secret to the flower, causing its petals to quiver with delight. Orange cough. The little orange kitten let out a tiny cough as it tried to meow for the first time, making its owner giggle with delight. We have a lot of delight. I guess that's the cute part. Here's a cute one-sentence story. The little purple monster couldn't help but giggle, making a funny vibrating lip sound as he watched his reflection in the mirror while trying his mom's on his mom's oversized hat. 
The little turquoise monster let out an adorable high-pitched scream when he saw his reflection in the mirror for the first time. So, okay. It's we now understand how it works. It is interesting. Um, but some limitations. I can't upload a CSV file. That would be really cool because then it would just, otherwise I've got to like manually type all this stuff in. Click on the three dots over there to the right of the run all. Rename prompt or delete prompt. Okay. But let's, let's see that. what the three dots here. Because three dots. Duplicate. Delete. All right, yeah. And select the rating. Okay, and then what do you do with it? Like, there's no export this. But yeah. should be an export this. But there's not yet. They'll fix it. It's in beta. Um, it's in beta, for sure. I think it's kind of cool. Um, obviously, there's more to explore with this with the prompting and things like that. It would be interesting to see if we're able to do this with the API that we're able to like put these in and then like the because when I was doing the prompt, it kind of showed how to like label those. I kind of want to see what the what the back end is, you know, like set the variables. So you can do this once for one thing. You don't have to do all of them. But I wonder if we could go color equals and then have it and then say like run each of these individually or something. I'm going to do something kind of crazy. I'm going to do an array. Colors. Pulse. I'll do it all over. Color. We'll go with teal. And then here I will do sound equals whisper. No, it's right there what it filled it in with. Okay, whisper. Um, cough, gurgle, scream. And I'm just going to go run. We're not even going to like use the variable. Let's see what it does. Yeah, that's what, I mean, it didn't do teal. And it didn't do screen. Run again. I wonder if it's because you don't have it in the variable, so it technically doesn't see it. Teal. I apologize. An excited scream of joy. So, moral of the story, they've made crap more complicated than it needs to be. <laughs> Not surprised. You can just put it all in there and it reasons and all of that. So, I don't know that we necessarily have to do this variable nonsense, but I'm sure for more advanced things, it's probably better or something like that. But for our purposes, I don't know that it's necessary. I think it's a lot of extra work for not a lot of game. But you could still use a methodology of like, these are the, this is where the variables go. And then this is the list of variables to put in there. And it seems to like just understand that as, as, as a prompt technique. Like, I don't think you have to do this particular methodology. What do you think, Steph? I agree. Yeah. I think that it might be more for programmers who are basically like folding their prompts in into the back end and they're just going to test a bunch of prompts really quickly and then not. Uh, and let a so user put in the variable. Yeah, let a user put in the variable because they're not going to expose their actual prompt to anybody. So, and then in, in in Anthropic's defense, the playground, the workbench, that sort of thing is really only supposed to be used by API developers. <laughs> That's what they made it for. Yeah. We're just using it because we we figured it out. So, but even mm -hmm. if I was an API developer, I don't want to export that information. Like, probably maybe maybe that's something they'll add. After they're out of yeah. or something. I don't know. Um, I think you could also use the variables in a complicated way. Like if you don't have Rexy to like sequence prompts, because you could have different prompts and then it runs those steps or something. Um, definitely going in the right direction in terms of like more added functionality to these AI, it, the AI, the large language model. So that's always good. Um, so just off the cuff, little 20 minutes with 3.5 sonnet i'm impressed i think i would use this model now i'm confused i want to know how much money it is so let's go see how much it costs so i will just go to claude and there used to be pricing over here feature preview wait what's the feature preview please note artifact oh a dedicated thing next to your i'm going to turn it on why not we have a lot of things to play with. I guess artifacts is their answer for memory or something. We'll see. Um, setting? Nope. 
you need to go to the console. You need to go to the console to actually look at pricing because when the chat, you're paying a flat fee. That's true. There you go. That's true. I don't think it's pricing is in here though. I think it's, I think it's in the documentation. Google it. See what we got. It is a little cheaper than 4.0. It is three, wait. Three and 15. It's the same price. Intelligence. Yeah. I think they just kept it the same price. I think they're trying to compete with 4.0. So three and 15, we can go back to the right of thought and my Claude 3, my original like comparison here. And the original one was three and 15. So there's been no price change to Sonnet. Sonnet just got smarter staying the same price. You could argue that is a ch price change, like we have better functionality and it's cheaper, but I don't think that many people are going to correlate those two things. So there is that. Um, wait, vision benchmarks. So it's able to, now it's finally able to interpret charts and graphs, I guess. That's cool. If I have some charts and graphs running around. Artifacts are a new way to use Claude. Uh, when a user asks Claude to generate content like code snippets, text documents, or website designs, these artifacts. Hold up. Wait a minute. Okay. I got an idea. I'm going to go to the chat for this. Because we have artifacts, right? And I turned that on. But let me see. I went to settings. Settings. No, that's not what I did. Where did I? Feature preview. You have to go to feature preview. Go back. I'm stuck in settings. I'm going to go to feature preview, click on that, and I turned on artifact, right? Okay. So I'm going to do the same thing with the chat here. I'm going to put in the system prompt. It's okay. The you are a blah, blah, blah. And then I'm going to say, go ahead and start writing following your instructions. You can ask any questions at any time. So I'm going to say, go, wait, what is this? One experimental feature enabled. Okay, cool. We got that. Come back over here where, where it talked about this. You do this, it says. It's just the beginning of a broader version. Okay. See, edit, and build upon Claude's creations in real time. Generate content. Okay. Oh, it can make it can make images now. I know. So so it's doing this thing. Okay, finish the thing I do. It's enjoying. It's enjoying Xan and Zora. You can and now. Stop. That's good. Claude now has oh breaks. He did not before. Great. They really wrote you something. Oh my goodness. Turn that great response to a .txt file I can download. Now, because you can download the file. If you have a bunch of text files, you can import those puppies into Notion or anywhere. It's a lot faster than copying it. Well, maybe not faster. It's still doing this thing. So probably like with the command, we say like, like turn it into a text file and it'll just do that inside. This is a feature inside of chat only. So you have to go to feature, feature preview, turn it on. And then when it's done with that, let's see if it will make an image. Okay. Okay, come on, dun, 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 dun. Little Great. did she know. Great. Little did she know. Is there anything else? And look, the file included the entire scene as written, formatted and marked down for easy reading and potential editing. Let's you have to say, um, say, I'm going to say make an image for... Look, make a, make a JPEG. Or... Maybe yeah. tell it, tell it like the, the actual file. Bam. Go. Let's go, Claude. I believe in you. It can't. It can only oh, read. It, it said um, in the documentation that you clicked on, there was um, an SVG file. I wonder, see, it made the little bit monster guy. So it asked an 8-bit style crab for you using SVG. Instead, ask for an SVG file and see if that works. Okay. You can't edit the original. Oh, it, we're in chat. Well, now it's doing it. It's making a 
Okay. Oh Hold my on, gosh. On. It's actually making like a coated thing. Yes. There we go. Well, it's oh like the my God. Cool, it draws it. Mm -hmm. That's fun. If you want the code, it's right here. <laughs> That's funny. Mm -hmm. That's hilarious. SVG files are kind of like the MIDI files of images, right? Yeah. It's just like it's code well, that tells the tells it then what to do. Yeah, it's a vector. It's file. a vector, so you mm -hmm. can take it into um, uh, Illustrator, Adobe mm -hmm. Illustrator, and make changes to it. Yep. Oh, so it's a little bit better. Um, that's funny. And you make it interesting and detailed. What about a logo for the Galactic Dating Service? Oh, well, that's a good idea. Okay. We got stars mm -hmm. and we got the logo. And then we have Zora and Zan. And communication symbols. They have. We have an animation though. I mean. I wonder if I could like upload an image that's inspiring it and get it to turn into like an SVG with the thing. Maybe. Like add an animation or. Claude's got a long way to come here. But look, but he can see that's she that's her on the left and that's him on the right, right? Because he's like a purple blue alien. Yeah. Oh my god, that's funny. The green stick body. It's like it's like a two-year-old drew this. I love it. I love it. All right. So um we're impressed. I suggest uh we table this discussion here so everyone has time to go play with this before it crashes because you know everybody and their mother will be playing on it but that is Claude point five slot it all the some of the new goodies that we got so go us all right i'll stop the recording